Okay, welcome back. My name is Wade Smith. What do you mean, welcome back? I've never seen one of your videos before in my life. And what the hell is up with that beard? Your profile picture clearly depicts a cleanly shaven person. I demand compensation for this blatant false advertising, and I'll take that compensation in form of material to respond to in a video. And uh, what I want to talk about today is um, uh, evidence um, and the atheist's rejection of evidence for God. Um, evidence for God and the atheist's rejection of evidence. The um, Typically, whenever you give a rational argument for the existence of God, the atheist will ask you for evidence. And then I say, well, we present evidence all the time, and you reject it anyway. I don't think you understand how evidence works. Let's make an analogy here, because I like doing that. Let's make proposing a claim analogous to a transaction, where the quantity of evidence provided is the quantity of dollar bills, and the quality of the evidence is the, you know, actual cash value of each individual bill, okay? And the person you're trying to buy something from is the person you're trying to convince that something is true, all right? Now let's say you wanted to buy the complete box set of the series Futurama for $120 from Best Buy, even though you already have the first four seasons on DVD, and you just want a nicer box to have all of the DVDs in. Yeah, I should have waited for that, shouldn't I? So let's say you walk up to the cashier and give him six bills, each worth $20 each. That is sufficient quantity and quality. You've completed the transaction, and you get to find a place to give those season one through four DVDs to. But if you gave the cashier, say, 1,000 pennies, he would say, fuck off and come back when your money, evidence, is actually worth something. In this analogy, you would be the customer saying, but look at how much I gave you. You see, you have a lot, it's just not worth anything, okay? Shit, my cat knocked my tripod askew. Stupid cat. For example, the perfection of the development of DNA in organisms and, uh, you know, implies an intelligent creator, not random chance plus selection. Perfect by what standard? I can say from personal experience that organisms aren't perfect from a functional standpoint. I don't wear these glasses for show, you know. Put words about a foot and away from my face and I'm practically illiterate. So we know it's not perfect functionally, so let's compare the DNA of every organism alive today to the first life form. Oh wait, we don't have that. Well, we can kind of assume that the DNA hasn't replicated perfectly over the years because, well, the first organism was at, was basically a single-celled life form, and what was it? The red-lipped cave... Fuck, what was it called? Red-lipped batfish? Yeah, those things exist. So we know that animals over the years haven't perfectly adhered to the, you know, original genetic code. It's like a Bethesda game. Is this a bug or is this a feature? Yes. So please, please explain what is so perfect about life. No, kitty, what are you doing? I need that to record. Uh, so... But then if you, uh, so then they will reject that and say if we have an infinite monkey typing randomly forever, eventually it's bound to spit out the complete works of Shakespeare. This is a thousand monkeys working at a thousand typewriters. Soon, they'll have written the greatest novel known to man. Let's see. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. You stupid monkey. You oh, shut up. Oh, and don't worry, I checked the mug, tankard, whatever that is in that shot, and don't worry, it's not a stonecutter's tankard, I checked. Uh, the one Homer is holding, the lines on the little shield thing are diagonal, and they go green, white, red, where, as we can see in this freeze frame, one second, we can see that this tankard held by Lenny, the shield on it, it it has horizontal lines that go blue, red, blue. So it's not a stonecutter's tankard, I checked, but that would have been totally awesome if it was. <laughs> okay, what was the point he was making that got me on this giant Simpsons tangent? Uh, so, 
But then if you, uh, so then they will reject that and say if we have an infinite monkey typing randomly forever, eventually it's bound to spit out the complete works of Shakespeare. And I answer that with no, it's not, because there are actually a greater than infinite number of mistakes the, in the monkey can make when typing a finite string. Okay, an infinite amount of mistakes can be made in a finite string. Okay, so there's 27 letters, and let's just be simple and say there's three spaces for them. There's this fancy-ass math thing you can do that I keep forgetting how to do because I don't pay attention in math. But basically, you plug all the numbers in, and it gives you the possible amount of mistakes in that... Not the possible amount of mistakes. It gives you the all possible combinations of those letters. And even with repeated uses of the same letter, there are still a limited number of possible combinations. I think the thing that's confusing you is the infinite monkey, because that's sure as hell confusing me. I'm going to assume that you mean a monkey with infinite time, because I don't know what an infinite monkey would be. Okay, let's change this analogy to a random letter generator filling in an equivalent amount of spaces in the collected works of Shakespeare. If you leave this thing going for infinity, you're going to get Shakespeare eventually. But let's just add a selection pressure. Every time that it gets a letter in the right spot, that letter stays locked in place for the next randomization. For example, if it generates FS space FC space GE space GUF space SX space DE. For the next randomization, the T at the beginning and the E at the end are locked in, giving us TO space UD space OS space NHY space VY space FE until eventually we get TO space BE space OR space NOT space TO space BE or to be or not to be. You see where I'm going with this? Under the right circumstances with the right selections and stuff like that, beauty can arise out of RNG. Now this whole point is kind of moot since natural selection doesn't have an end goal in mind, it's just whatever, you know, is best suited to not die, doesn't die. But I think it's still an adequate response to whatever sent me on that whole Simpsons-based tangent. Alright, it can actually type too long or too short. I just typed a paragraph where my point was reliant on limited space, but that's okay. I'm leaving it in because I still think it's good. really need to remember to watch the whole video before I start typing. It can type A A A A A. It can type A A A A A A B. It can type A A A A A A A A A A C, and so on. There is a greater than infinite number of mistakes the monkey can make in a finite time. Do you even pay attention to the responses people give you to stuff like that? It's not a monkey with finite time. It's either an infinite number of monkeys with infinite time or one monkey with infinite time. It's not a finite number amount of time. That's where you messed up. That's what confused you. So no, an infinite monkey cannot create the complete works of Shakespeare by random chance, nor can it create a human being by random chance. Well, if the monkey is infinite, who's to say what it could and couldn't do? I mean, what could an infinite being do? It has infinite power, so who knows what it could possibly do? It could create people. Isn't that what your entire religion is based around, an infinite being creating people? And besides all of this, an infinite monkey would just be a dumb god, alright? If you actually had an infinite typing monkey, it would be a dumber god. Don't you dare insult Jangles, the infinite moon monkey. He is an infinite being, and therefore infinitely smarter than you. And if the infinitely smart monkey is dumb, then you're infinitely dumber than Jangles, the infinite moon monkey. What the fuck did I just say? What? So you've actually committed the sin of idolatry by considering the infinite monkey hypothesis. Okay, I'll admit you've trapped me. What do I explain first? Do I explain that the Jangles the Infinite Moon Monkey joke was just that, a joke in the vein of Godless Cranium's lazy-eyed, invisible, pink, god-killing dragon? Or do I explain that we atheists don't actually worship an infinite monkey? The infinite... fuck. The monkey with infinite time typing analogy is just an analogy to explain, you know, how randomness can actually produce desired results, given enough time. No! 
Hey everyone, uh, my cat kind of broke the camera when she knocked it over. So I guess donate money to my Patreon account so I can buy a camera that won't break if the cat breathes on it wrong. Or um, I guess, I don't know, if any of you are good at art stuff, preferably digital art, like, I don't know, make me an avatar to use for videos, I guess, because to be honest, I kind of don't like filming, but I would kind of like to use an avatar instead. Anyways. Yeah, I'm gonna try and find a stopgap solution until I can get a working camera or I get an avatar. Sorry about this.